Hey everybody, welcome back. Son of a Silver Stacker here. In today's news, medic news and information for the 10th day of October 2023, I'm going to welcome you over to where? You guessed it, moneymetals.com. And I'm going to say uh, two things here. The precious metal, live spot prices, as well as the premium for those American Silver Eagles. So it looks like gold's down 415 to 1868.35. Silver down 15 cents to 2195. Platinum down 545 to 899.60. And palladium down $9 and a nickel to 1169.65. You're looking at an in-stock American Silver Eagle whose premium was $8.49. Remember, just a couple days ago, we were at $6.99. So, looks like it shot up just a few bucks there almost. Now, let's keep on keeping on. Here we are at the United States Mint's bullion sales page. No new tale to tell for the month of October so far. Nothing going on here. And hopefully, like I said, we'll be at that $20 million mark here for the American Silver Eagles. And that would really maybe not do anything for the premiums but let's face it it's better than a sharp stick in the eye right now let's get over here to the uh, next item on the agenda today you're looking at the united states mints american eagle that's the san francisco proof the one that started it all back in 1986 and look at that steep price of 80 dollars so it would be amazing if we could actually have the um, United States Mint put silver on the pricing grid because if not, it sure makes it look a little bit on the shady side like that the United States Mint is funding all their operation on the backs of silver stackers. And um, at a time when most people probably are going paycheck to paycheck or living off of their credit card, that's kind of a shysty, shady thing to do, I would think. Hmm, yeah, I would think so. Now... This is a great article by Numismatic News, uh, Patrick Heller, dated October 6, 2023. And it says here, Golden Week's effect on precious metals. And that's a holiday in China, folks, right there. Um, you got to just follow along with this. This is incredible. It says here, this is um, the United States government is the entity with the most to lose if gold and silver prices rise. Uh, okay. And so they might have a... Um, some vested interest in manipulating the gold and silver markets so that they don't get hammered, right? That's probably true. And why is it that they're the only ones who can manipulate the price of gold and silver and get away with it? Because let's face it, uh, I think um, private traders have done this and saw, well, they've seen jail time, I think, or at least been ordered to go to jail. I don't know, there might be an appeal. And they've also paid, what, fines? Yeah, major multiple million dollar fines on these things. Now it says here, there are perhaps $12 trillion worth of U.S. currency and U.S. Treasury debt held by foreign governments, central banks, businesses, and individuals. The currency uh, constitutes uh, an interest-free loan to the U.S. government. The Treasury debt helps enable the U.S. government to continue massive deficit spending. There you go. So it all has to do with the amount of printing they can do, right? There it is. Massive deficit spending and printing of money. There it is. And, that, and that's why they manipulate it, right? The federal government has explicitly been authorized to manipulate the price of gold since the creation of the Exchange Stabilization Fund way back when, in 1934, using a large chunk of the paper profits from when it raised the price of gold reserves from $20.67 per ounce to $35 per ounce. Declassified documents up to about a decade decade ago confirmed that the government has consistently constantly done so can you imagine if you sold all your like mandatory you got to sell your gold for 2067 back in the day and then they turn around and revalue it at 35 dollars yeah that's a slap on the face with the dead fish how many times is that going to feel good? Now, it says here, since the price of silver rises or falls in conjunction with the price of gold about 70% of the time, that also gives the U.S. government an incentive to suppress the price of that metal. And should governments even be allowed into business or at least, you know what I mean? Like, should they have the power to uh, get in that business or at least be able to manipulate a free market? And is it really a free market if they're able to manipulate it? Yeah, probably not. So is it all just smoke and mirrors? Quite possibly, the American federal government budget and the American economy are each the largest of any nation. Thus, the U.S. government has the legal authority given to them by who? Themselves. And I guess the power of the purse uh, is, well, by the military, right? The financial incentive, the past track record, and the financial clout to act to hold down gold and silver prices. The federal government does not directly buy and sell physical gold to suppress its price. Instead, it works through primary trading partners of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, allied central banks, the International Monetary Fund, that's the IMF, and the Bank for International Settlements, that's the biz. A biz brochure listing its banking services notes that makes uh, that it makes gold available to central banks for purposes of manipulating that market. Yo, that just pretty much spells it out right there, folks. That That's their job. 
That's the, that's what they do. Now, tactics to help do, uh, hold down the gold price of gold include borrowing or swapping gold to make it appear that there's more physical metal available than reflects reality. So yeah, it makes they they go ahead and put um, all these numbers on the balance sheet and like, oh look, there's all this gold there. There's a glut of gold when there really isn't, right? And that makes the price come down. The maximum effect of this price suppression tactic is magnified when it's done during thinly traded markets. That's right. These times often occur around major holidays in major gold markets. And here we're going to talk about the uh, that golden week right there. This is the thinly, thinly traded market. Okay. Now, it says here the economic woes in China, such as collapsing real estate market, falling consumer demand, falling value of the Chinese yuan currency to the U.S. dollar, has led to a surge in demand by Chinese citizens to purchase gold and silver. This led the Chinese government to limit imports of these metals to try and put a lid on the trade. The result of this supply squeeze was for the spot price of gold in China a few, a few weeks ago to trade for more than $120 above the London market price. Silver spot price in China rose $2 above the London market. Gold reached an all... Okay, here we go, folks. This is a big deal, all right? Because did we reach an all-time high in the United States? No, but we are still at near all-time highs, okay? Gold reached an all-time high price measured in yuan. Saudi Arabia also saw gold price reach an all-time peak as measured in that nation's real. All right, so measured in the currency of that country, they have hit all-time prices. So if they have charts that they're looking at, they're saying, hey, wow, gold hit an all-time high. We're not saying that. We're saying, oh, it's so close, but no cigar, all right? A couple weeks ago, the Chinese government gave up limiting gold imports. That quickly led to the evaporation of most of the premium of the spot price. Buying surged in that country through Thursday last week. That was September 28th. Now, then the Chinese eight-day holiday called Gold Week began Friday last week on the 29th. Here we go. This is that thinly traded week, and it concludes Friday, okay, this week, October 6th. And um, you saw what happened, right? Wow. With gold demand temporarily at almost a standstill in the world's largest gold-consuming nation, this provided an extended opportunity for the price of gold and silver to be clobbered. It's clobbering time. Remember that? During the lower volume of global trading. Um, I alerted followers of Liberty Coin Services Facebook page on October 2 to expect weak precious metals prices this week. Absolutely. Good call, my man. Good call. If you have followed precious metals markets, you have seen gold on October 4 briefly fall below where it closed on the COMEX on March 8, 2023. There you go. That was before that banking crisis on March, I want to say, 16th. Or um, at least that's when we saw that uh, huge uh, action happen. March 8th, the day that Silicon Valley Bank failed. Silver had risen as much as more uh, as much more than 30% above where it closed on the COMEX on March 8, 2023, fell to as low as 4% above the March 8 close. Platinum this week also fell to the lowest price of more than a year, while Palladium's price to drop to a five-year low. Yeah, getting hammered, right? When Chinese consumers are able to, again to purchase gold and silver on Monday, October 9, that was just yesterday, which began at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday, October 8 in the U.S., I look for at least a partial recovery in gold and silver prices. This resurgence may also boost platinum and palladium prices. If you read this column before the U.S. markets close on October 6, you may be able to take advantage of a bargain buying opportunity. Opportunidad, right? So there's that. What do you think, folks? Pretty exciting stuff, huh? Now let's get over to the plus ones. Bam, this is, uh, what do we got here? Psalm 10314. It says here, for he knew our nature. He is mindful that we are dust. And I believe, trying to wrap my head around this, I think what this means is that, you know, the soul in turmoil is calmed by recounting or remembering the fact that the Lord's infinite kindness, well, he knows and he allows for us because he knows we have a material side of our dual nature, right? We have a spiritual side, we have a physical side. And that's, well, that physical side beckons us to sin, right? Now, is this what God's grace is for us? I believe it is. And that's just part of the picture, isn't it? Now, let's hit over here to 39599.9 KOIN Coin News Radio. This is Roxanne by the Police. Great song. Great little ditty. Is it a ditty? I don't know. But it, I love saying that word, ditty. <laughs> Hey, folks, listen, uh, I want to appreciate all y'all that um, now I'm going to go back to the homepage here. And there was a community post I put up here just uh, yesterday, and uh, it got uh, kind of ugly. Some folks uh, just can't just keep their mouth shut. And, um, you know, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. But I did put up here, uh, dear valued viewers, I hope this letter finds you well. I wanted to take a moment to express my gratitude for your incredible support. 
and being a part of the Son of a Silver Stacker community, creating content on YouTube has been a passion of mine for the past four years. It's been an amazing journey, and I'm thrilled to have you along for the ride. Your comments, likes, shares, and subscriptions mean the world to me, and they motivate me to continue producing content that entertains, educates, or and or inspires. As you may know, running a YouTube channel can be bought. Look, what I'm doing here is I'm asking for donations, and some people are like, yeah, I'm voting with my wallet. Bye. And they, you know, okay, cool. But, you know, if you can't, I get it. All right? I get it. Hey, you know what? Some people... If you're living a paycheck to paycheck, I mean, even buying a taco at Taco Bell is a lot, right? Or maybe you can't even do that because you don't have any cash money. And then there's another person on here that uh, Constitutional Stacker uh, was trying to defend me. And, I, you know, I got to hand it to Constitutional Stacker. Me, my wife, and my son, we all three have COVID, okay? And I don't really have the energy to fight um, people um, when they act like jerks, all right? And, you know, people are going to act like jerks. It's just part of the thing but really i mean you know you really don't know what anybody's going through and um you know part of this uh, money um is you know was going to help me buy medicine for my wife because we don't get paid till friday and my stupid youtube money doesn't come out until the 21st so yeah i'm just asking for a little something something from y'all and if you can't hey that i get it that's okay no pressure right but if you can, hey, thank you so much. And I've had two people actually um, donate money, and I want to thank you both with, from the bottom of my heart. My, I thank you. My my son thanks you. My wife thanks you. And uh, the good God above thanks you as well. So there it is, folks. I want to thank you all for watching. Thanks for dropping by. Don't forget to hit that like button. And if you do like what you're seeing, well, sub the channel. It's free. Stack her out.